Today, we're diving into the best AI face swapper that is currently available. It is totally free and jam-packed with features. You can run it on your own machine. There's no confusing spaghetti comfy nodes going everywhere and installation is actually pretty easy. Let's dive in. So Face Fusion 3 has arrived and it has really upped the game. Not only can you do image and video face swapping, but they've also integrated things like Advanced Life Portrait, which we've covered on the channel. We now have aging controls, so you can either go, you know, younger or older. And I think the case of most of us, we'd rather aim for a younger slider. We can even do lip syncing and live webcam face swapping. Although I am gonna put a little bit of an asterisk on that last one, we'll talk about that in a little bit. To get started with installing Face Fusion 3, we're gonna be utilizing Pinocchio. Now, I know a few of you out there have expressed some wariness about installing Pinocchio. Please do stay tuned. I have something coming up that I think will put your mind at ease. If you aren't aware of what Pinocchio is, it basically acts as a virtual computer downloading you know the files from github repositories allowing you to use ai tools locally without having to deal with a bunch of headaches in terms of installation obviously to get started we just go over to pinocchio.computer and hit the download button the great thing about pinocchio is that you can download it in windows flavor mac flavor or linux flavor so this is the part where i think that people sometimes get a little bit you know sketchy is that on the Windows side, you know, obviously you download it, you unzip it, and then during the install process, you'll be hit with the Windows, you know, protected your PC, and you have to hit the Run Anyway button. And on the Mac side, you download the DMG as normal, move over the Pinocchio application to the Applications folder, but then you have to open a patch command that then opens up Terminal and does scary Terminal stuff. Linux people can just download it with no problems. I totally understand that that might feel a little sketchy. So I reached out to Pinocchio's developer to get some clarification on why this is. It essentially comes down to the fact that on the Microsoft and the Apple side as developer, you need to you know sign each app. Basically, the only reason this pop-up shows up is because I refused to join the Microsoft walled garden and wanted to make sure the app itself stands on its own, since I believe going forward, all of these platform providers will increasingly try to lock their users into their own platform, which Microsoft has proven to be moving forward to with their recent announcements. He did go on to say, but I do know this is annoying. So at some point planning to cave in and start signing apps. So by default, people don't have to go through these inconveniences, but at the same time have the original option of directly downloading from GitHub, like how it works today, even if Microsoft and Apple tries to censor AI usage. So there you have it, about as an official explanation as you can possibly get from a community-driven project. So all of that out of the way, let's get to the actual you know meat and potatoes and fun of this whole thing. Um, once you fire Pinocchio up, you should have a screen that looks like this. You'll have a list of things that you have installed here. Uh, what you'll want to do if it's not already there is head up to the Discover tab here, uh, and then you'll see Face Fusion here. Again, if you haven't used Pinocchio, there's a whole world of other stuff that you can check out, all of which is free. Obviously, in the case of Face Fusion, we'll simply click on this tab and then hit the Download button. Button. The download itself should go pretty quickly, but from here, what we're actually going to need to do is hit the install button. Now, this is the part that can take a little bit, uh, depending, I would say somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. So just make sure you book that time in. This will load up yet another screen as uh, the CLI here is running. We just give that a few minutes to, there it is. Okay, so that's about how long it takes. Um, and then from there, all we have to do is hit the UI default button. We're done, I promise. So we are now in Phase Fusion 3.0. I'm just gonna actually hit this button there so uh, we get a better view of it. So just to give you an idea of how this works, um, I'm gonna take a clip from Beetlejuice uh, and I'm gonna pop that right here into the target area. I'm then gonna take a photo of myself and drop it here in the source area. Uh, you can see it's already starting to generate. And there's my first frame. You can preview along the frames uh, by clicking along the timeline here. You'll see it'll update with my face as it goes along. And yes, that is terrifying. Uh, now, one of the things that you will definitely want to do is make sure if you're on a Mac, uh, Core ML is turned on here. If you're on a PC, uh, you will hopefully see something that says CUDA. Uh, make sure that that is turned on as well. To be honest, from this point, you can really just head down here uh, and hit the start button and uh, you will begin generating a face swap. It's showtime. 
Now for some other options that we have in face fusion, you can change out the actual model that is doing the face swapping. Um, you know, we have blend swap up here, ghost 256. Uh, personally, I've always really liked in swapper. I think it does a pretty great job. So, you know, you can play around with these to see how they work for you. Now, Face Enhancer is definitely a worthy stack alongside Face Swapper. So uh, that obviously enhances the quality of your output. Um, you'll probably notice down here in the terminal command, when you first run it, that it essentially has to download Face Enhancer. So that may take a minute or two the first time you try to run it. Um, I've already got it installed here. Uh, but even then, as you can see, it's taking kind of a hot minute um, to come up with our preview frame. It does get a little faster as time goes on. There it is. Once again, here under the face enhanced model, we do have a number of different options that you can choose from as to what you want to use for your face enhancer. Um, you know, honestly, just you can play around with it. Default here worked pretty well though. Now on my machine, that ended up taking 158 seconds. Uh, granted, I also have like 30 other things running right now. And again, as always, it's all dependent on the beefiness of your machine. Before we move on, let's take a look at some other quick outputs that I put together. Uh, this of course is the famous what's in the box scene from Dune. My fellow Tim doing a fairly stellar acting job there. So what's it look like when I'm in the scene? Well, uh, a little bit on the disturbing side to me really good in terms of the face swap. Um, just again, um, I I don't know if I can take myself seriously with that hair. I also did a little, well, let's call it a little bit of light trolling, taking this shot from Kill Bill, uh, of course, starring Uma Thurman, uh, and then uploading an image of Scarlett Johansson and running that. And we end up with this fairly remarkable result from a movie maybe called uh, Kill Colin Jost. Now, I do wanna point out that things aren't always perfect, especially when you have a lot of head movement going on, uh, such as this scene uh, of Kyle Reese from the original Terminator picked for very obvious reasons, but did you guys see the news that James Cameron joined the board at Stability AI? That's pretty big. It also means that all stable video outputs are now going to be IMAX size and in 3D. Anyhow, going back to 1984, yeah, this output was not great. It obviously kept losing track of Michael Bean's face and my face. So I ended up having to run it with the face swapper on, the face enhancer, and the frame enhancer on, meaning it took me essentially three times as long, uh, and the results still weren't necessarily that great. One quick thing that I did forget to point out, uh, if you're noticing that your uh, preview image isn't picking up on your face swap. Uh, do make sure that the face selection gender down here is turned to either male, female, or none. Uh, for example, if we hit female here, what you'll notice is that it won't pick up on Kyle Reese's face. There's a number of times that I forgot about that and I was just like, why isn't this working? But if we scrub over to Linda Hamilton appearing in the shot, uh, yes, we do end up in the darkest timeline. Now, if you're wondering how this all holds up when you're using AI generated characters, well, I mean, I was planning, of course, on using our girl, Daniela Van Den Ock, dressed as a pirate, but in kind of a twist and to turn things around a bit, uh, I thought it might be fun to take an AI generated output and use the actual Daniela Van Den Ock. So taking this cling output of, well, she's supposed to be a pirate woman. She kind of actually comes off a little bit more like uh, a fantasy warrior, but whatever. So running both of them through Phase Fusion 3, I present to you, Dutch football player Daniela Van Den Ock dressed not as a pirate. Moving over to lip syncing, uh, what you want to do is hit the lip syncer button here. Uh, I'm going to use a piece of video that I generated for a project that actually just kind of uh, I need to get back to at some point or another. So this shot was generated in Luma Labs, as you can tell by the watermark up in the corner. Uh, and the prompt here, I think, was just like woman talking. We had some audio recorded via Eleven Labs, uh, and I think there's some soundtrack also here. So we pop that into the source area. Uh, again, our video is down here. Um, and then all we really have to do from here is just hit start. Because when you look at the past, you see into the future. Now that isn't really timed correctly, nor is the motion correct for it. But I, I think that just does illustrate that's, you know, essentially what lip syncer looks like. If you spend a little more time than the 17.27 uh, seconds that I did on this, uh, I think that you can come out with a pretty decent looking lip sync. Rounding out with the two last features, uh, Mystic, which we took a look at a few videos back, um, that is now in V2 and is available over on Magnific. So uh, giving that a test out, I generated up this uh, red haired lady in a cafe eating a croissant. The croissant is actually as big as her head is, and I am jealous. 
So bringing her back over to Face Fusion, we're gonna drop her into the target area here um, so that we can use Face Editor. Uh, I, sometimes it gets a little confusing. I always wanna put things into source. It won't work if you put it into source. It has to be in target. Uh, face Editor is, I mean, well, it's basically Advanced Live Portrait, uh, which we also looked at a few videos ago. Um, we have you know all of our various controls, so let's kind of play around with some of them. So yeah, as you're playing around with it, I think that you can end up with some you know pretty good fine tuning results. I don't think that this is necessarily something where you're going to in paint completely different expressions or emotions onto your characters. Uh, this is more about just making things a little more correct in terms of like eyeline, maybe bringing out a smile a little bit more, bringing out like a frown a little bit more. Finally, for the age modifier, and this is one that I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm still a little bit on the mid side, and it took me a little bit to figure out um, exactly how to work this. Um, so we have our face age selector down here, or face selector age down here. Um, and what you want to do is kind of aim for a relative age range that this person is in. So uh, I would say that she's probably somewhere between like 22 and uh, 31. Maybe she she looks really good for, th actually, well, I don't know, looking at her now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick her up to 33. Take that AI redhead. Uh, okay, so um, from there we can take our age modifier direction. So because we've actually honed in that she's somewhere between 22 and 33, which is, you know, 11 years. Um, we can start moving this. So let's take that, let's let's age her up another 14 years and see what ends up happening. Yeah, see, that's what I mean, not much. Um, okay, let's take her up to like 46. I don't know if this is in years, it can't, it can't be. So maybe we're saying now she is 46 years old. Okay, yeah, so now she's, you know, starting to look 46. Uh, let's. All right, let's just be really mean and crank her up to like 81 years old. So yeah, there you go, 81. Now she is really looking good for her age. And I guess ultimately that's the problem that I have with the age modifier is that sure, it modifies, you know, to a degree, but there's still a lot kind of lacking. I am sort of impressed at the fact that it actually does change the hair color somewhat. I guess that's just like face fusion subtle way of letting us know like, hey, I know that she's dyeing her hair too, but moving her back to a negative 55. And I don't even know what these numbers mean anymore because if she's somewhere between 22 and 33 and we've taken her 55 years back i mean she's she's basically in a time travel movie but regardless um yeah we do see that she definitely looks a lot younger now um so yeah it, it works i just don't know how much use we really have for it now as for the webcam feature uh so i was not having any luck there so i'm gonna hit stop here uh and then to run the webcam you would you know obviously come up and hit run webcam and we're basically into what looks a lot like our previous ui except you know obviously there's just webcam here so if i hit start hypothetically my uh webcam should kick on oh yes yeah, super weird where am i looking and just to make things extra weird i'm going to take an image of me and drop it into the source here um and then yeah if i hit start i'm just i just freeze so uh, i'm not sure exactly what's going wrong here. It might have something to do with like NVIDIA GPUs versus uh, Mac M series machines. I don't know. Um, that said, I mean, there's plenty of other stuff to play with just in the core of Face Fusion 3. So um, I will definitely keep an eye on the webcam thing. If I figure out a way to get it working, I'll let you guys know. But all in all, yeah, that's a pretty fantastic suite of tools. And again, all for free. Plus there's like tons of other stuff that you can discover in Pinocchio. And look, I guess closing out, I just, I feel like I do need to say this. Like this is very powerful technology. Do not be a jerk with it. Use it for fun. Use it for your AI films and images. Use it for your creativity. Do not use it for evil. Just, just don't be evil. Until next time, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.